Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sister Noob back to talk about Race to Survive, colon, Alaska. And we're talking about episode two here on Hit or Quit, the show where we decide is a show a hit or if we should quit podcasting. And I'm back here with a woman who does not quit. It's Jenny Autumn. Jenny, how are you? I'm wonderful. It's it's survival camp time, baby. It's yes. time to forage and and forge relationships. Yes, forage and forge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that should be the tagline of the show. Boy, hit or <laughs> quit, I will say that it is a show that does not quit when it comes to the heavy promotion that they are doing for Race to Survive Colon Alaska. Now, maybe it's just me, Jenny. Maybe it's my algorithm, but I was watching YouTube all week and I was bombarded with advertisements for race to survive colon alaska i wouldn't say i'm being bombarded but i'm definitely noticing it um and and i i don't know just just on the internet um i'm very aware of this show's existence which says mm -hmm. something because i'm in canada and i don't think that it's e easily watched here yeah. um so I don't know. It could Not be the algorithm. Not easily watched though. in the U.S. I think is part of the challenge. <laughs> uh, now it is on the USA Network. I believe if, uh, it comes on after Monday Night Raw, which is a pretty good yes. time slot uh, because uh, that you have uh, you know uh, Monday Night Raw is a big deal, but mm -hmm. hard to watch online. Uh, one of our listeners, uh, Brandon, was asking us, "Yeah, where do you go to watch?" Hit a quick. I want. I want to stream it, and I think mm -hmm. the answer to that question was the roku channel which i that was confusing to me because i thought that you could just stream it straight on nbc but no uh it doesn't it does not appear that that's the case uh we will try to confirm that uh i also let's make sure brandon had a good note uh sam that uh, we should have in the show notes a link to watch the show that we are talking about in case so maybe people got caught up in between last episode in this one we are recording this on monday night so we don't have a ton of feedback yet from the audience about mm -hmm. how they are feeling about hit or quit uh or, or uh race to survive colon alaska but i saw some people say they, they enjoyed it like i hope I so know. you know yeah. uh, i feel like that while i do feel like that maybe the best is yet to come for this show like i have to say that i feel like that i am like settling in uh with the uh format for race to survive call in alaska yeah I, I mean this this episode was a little frustrating at times because um there was no uh question of who's going to get eliminated because we had the information. It was a non-elimination episode for episode two. Right. But you know, it's a non-elimination episode at the beginning of the episode, which is like, which kind of took a little bit of the drama away from me because it was like built up as like, Oh, you know, like uh, Fabia and Genevieve and Hakeem and, and justice are like fighting for the last spot. But we knew that they were both going to still be in the race because you know uh, Rester got, you know, medically yes. uh, eliminated. Did so they say like, that? I, I, I kind of figured that that's what was going to happen. But I don't know if they if they said uh, that that was going to happen. I felt like it was kind of like, um, I mean, sorry to talk Survivor on, on, you know, a podcast that is not about Survivor, but like this past episode, sorry for spoilers, uh, you know, th the vote being Josh and like knowing that he has no real idol. So it was like, we kind of mm -hmm. know how this is going to end. So it was kind of just like yeah. making up drama for the inevitability that like of the result. And I just felt like, we saw the seven medallions in this crate last episode. We know they started with eight teams and one of those teams left last week. So it's like, I don't know. I, I just didn't, I didn't understand. You're making good points, how, Jenny. How much of the, and like, that was the thing is because I thought that we were going to get like a little bit of the, of the beginning of the episode, just like closing up the, this end of the race when everyone gets their, their little, their power veto necklace. Um, but most of the episode was about the rest of them finishing this leg of the race. And mm -hmm. it's like, it kind of takes the intrigue away when you know that they're all still going to be in the race. And 
there you have the equalizer of them getting to survival camp when they're going to rest- start the next leg of the race all from the same spot at the same time. So yeah. I don't know. That was my frustration with this episode. But we got a lot more about the, the, the people playing. So that part I liked. Yeah. And I will say that now I feel like that I understand the show. I understand what the format is. And I will say that it's sort of like uh, The Amazing Race. Uh, if The Amazing Race didn't go any place that was super amazing. Um, if The Amazing <laughs> Race was in a forest. You? <laughs> <laughs> With all due respect to the Alaskan rainforest, I mean, this is the like uh, the like a uh, tenth hour of television I've watched about this in the last couple of weeks, and so <laughs> they, I mean, it's like it's nice, Jenny, it's but like I kind of feel like that you've seen what uh, like one piece of this forest, you've seen the whole thing. It's a lot of trees. It's a lot it's, of trees. It's a lot of trees. Yeah, they, uh, I mean, they water. did walk across like a, a big gorge at one point. It seems that the, that the 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 grass uh, or like the the land is very like sinkholey. Yeah, uh, it's it's quicksand esque. Yes, um, let's just say I'm not really seeing the forest for the trees. <laughs> right, it's, it's all just forest. So I'm sure it's beautiful if you're there. That being yeah. said. What I do think is interesting is that once the teams arrive uh, where, you know, you have like days and days to get there, then if you are one of the first teams to arrive, like we saw at the end of the last episode where Wilson and Oliver arrived, then we get to see what happens in the days that you were waiting for other teams to show up. And I do feel like that that is interesting what's going on at survival camp. That being said, nothing that super exciting happened at the survival <laughs> camp. Yes. Like this but it a, could. It, it could. It, it, might it might be exciting. Maybe. <laughs> Down the road. You're saying there's a chance. It's possible. <laughs> Maybe not yet. The, the big drama might have been... Uh, you know, convincing people to tell uh, the secrets to clamming. <laughs> um, but this was the part of the the format that I was most excited for, and, and I believe you as well, because I want to see the teams interact. I want to see that there could be a social strategic element of this game, because otherwise th- there's only so much enjoyment mm-hmm. I can get from people uh, racing to survive colon Alaska. So <laughs> I, I need, you know, we got a really great quote from, uh, I can't remember if it was Oliver or Wilson. Um, but, uh, you have to race, but you also have to survive. So you have your yes, racing, both things. You, <laughs> you have your surviving, but I just want a little bit more. Yeah. Should and they maybe have that's the, the show, colon. Johnny, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Should they have called the show race and survive colon Alaska? Yeah. Because, well, I guess you're racing to survive. So it's like you you race to the point where you survive for a, a couple of days. Yeah. Um, and then you go back to back to racing. And then back to racing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And I guess there it's is like a little surviving. bit of like a, you know, Lightning McQueen element to it where it's like, all right, well, this is the pit stop and I got to refuel. Yeah. I got to, you know, make sure that everything is all set and I'm ready to go. And have enough stuff. Now, we don't know if they get new rations also to go back out onto leg number two. It, Yeah, it's because they definitely don't get, you know, rations when they get to survival camp. The whole point of the survival camp portion of the game is now you survive off of the land or whatever rations you might have saved from your leg. Um, I So I have to imagine that they're maybe getting some new rations for the race part. Um, because otherwise, like, how do they have they packed time up to stuff. stop? Yeah, they did. They were packing up. And then I think that stuff. they have 12 hours every night to find new stuff. Yeah. And I do like it. it is interesting. The importance of the survive aspect besides just like okay well wouldn't it be cool to watch them survive like out in the elements as well besides like racing like there is a benefit to getting to survival camp earlier than yeah um, other people not just because like oh cool i was like the first or second team in this leg of the race um but also it's like you get the longest time 
to rest and re recharge and refuel, you get the first crack at whatever, um, you know, supplies or reserves are on the land. Right. So, um, and more time to, yeah, like more time to actually kind of charge yourself up for the next le leg. But this makes me wonder, Rob, like, are we just going to see like the, like, V variations of the same order of, of teams in all of these legs uh you know like is it kind of clear already like what teams kind of have, <laughs> have the juice right like uh i don't foresee that okay now that all the teams have gotten back together like i don't foresee that the team of hakeem and justice uh necessarily like leading the pack and getting there yeah. while wilson and oliver make a wrong turn and spend days trying to get to base camp yeah i don't know i just i just i think that we're always going to see some sort of combination of like the first couple teams at mm -hmm. at the front and then some combination of the the back end and then obviously like maybe maybe next week there will be a team eliminated I don't know. Maybe. We didn't get one this week, maybe. but um, yeah. I don't know. I just felt like because if you if you are Hunter and Oliver, and you know you're already killing it, like the we saw last week, the narrator tried to tell us that they made a big mistake and they were stupid, and it still seemed that like they were, you know, a decent amount ahead of Max and Christian, um, and got like a first crack at the land for quite a bit, and like they you're, you're telling me that like they're just gonna go off in the next thing and then like it's you know yeah. now that they're all filled up and stuff and it's just like it's not gonna go well for them i don't know so this was very weird and, and i do want to try to explain ourselves because i think that there are a lot of people that listen to these podcasts that don't watch the shows okay so wilson and <laughs> oliver they arrive at the base camp and they are the two like uh, uh like native alaskan brothers and they get to the base camp and they just basically kind of like, you know what? We're going to go do our own thing. And they basically just like abandon the other contestants. I don't think they like the other contestants. And I also don't think that the show particularly likes them because they are just not interacting with any of the other humans. Yeah, this is. And, and that's kind of too bad because I think that they are fun. They like and each they, other. They they're fun together. They um, I think that they have very infectious personalities, um, but I would love to see them interact with other people and we don't really get that. Right. Um, I mean, they did. Now, here's the thing is they're like, not there this... to play a game. No, they're there. To <laughs> they're, race. There. they're racing. <laughs> um, we we're getting this like feud started between uh you know like the the clear top two teams at this time in Oliver and Wilson and Max and Christian um because so this is where I kind of give Oliver and Wilson a little bit of a pass because they get there first and also like they don't know what the vibe is going to be when everyone gets to survival camp because they're the first ones there so then Max so the the next two people that arrive are Max and Christian, who basically like say a few words to them and then straight up just like threaten them and say like, we got our eyes on you. Like basically being like, you are our competition and we yeah. have our eyes on you to like try and beat you, which I thought was like coming in a little hot. For coming Max in a little hot, Christian. yeah. So I kind of understand again where it's like, okay, well, this is reminding me that this is a competition. Now we are sharing the land that we need to survive on. And it did also seem that Max and Christian like set up like a cook site, like far off mm -hmm. away from where like they had like tent spot too. So it's like, I felt like these two teams being the first two at survival camp set this weird vibe of like, we're not interacting with each other. And it mm -hmm. didn't become friendly until, you know, you got your, your, your Jeff and Kaysen. Hunter and your yeah. Kason and Bella. Um, so I, I, I kind of understand where Oliver and Wilson were coming from when like they get there first and then the next two people that show up are like not super friendly to them. They're like, all right, every right. every team for themselves, then like we're going to go catch a big ass fish. Well, the show's also like very judgy about like uh, Wilson and Oliver ate all their rations yeah. on the way to the survival camp. Yes. Yeah. Like it, it is always like the narrator is always kind of just like low key shading them. Mm -hmm. Um 
So that's why I feel like the show doesn't like them. The show's yeah. like Max and Christian are the heroes of this story, not Wilson and Oliver. Do you think don't that get, they don't get it twisted? Do you think that they were just disappointed? Like, do you think that they were like, oh, okay, we're not guys mad are at Wilson and Oliver, but we are just disappointed in them. They ate I all mean, their rations. They were not. They ate all the rations, and they're not interacting with the rest of the cast. Which even is like last week, they were like the drama. They're like, do we do the bad map skills? Wilson yeah. and Oliver are way off the course, and they finished in first. They I never know. lost the lead. That's what I didn't understand. I was like, what are they doing? Like, they're yeah, they're giving these guys dodo music without like actually having the music. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I don't know, but I I still enjoy when these Why do you like my this screen. race to survive Colin Alaska. <laughs> They're good at it, though. That's the thing. And like they we had the like, you know, however many days they were at survival camp, like, you know, we kept on getting this narrative narrative of like, oh, everyone else is catching clams. And like, you know, Oliver and Wilson still haven't eaten. And then like in the final day before they have to set back out on the race, like. Oh, and also, yeah, they were man they managed to get food. It's gonna be fine. It's like <laughs> are, mm -hmm. it almost makes me wonder, like, are these two just far and wide the winners? And they're just trying to give us some sort of like doubt in their abilities to make it interesting. Who which, which two? Oliver, Oliver and Wilson. Oh, I don't think so. Well, I'm just trying I, I to like make sense of it. You think you hate them? <laughs> I think they just hate them. I don't think they're trying oh, to hate them. That's so sad. Jenny, look at the <laughs> look at the poster for the show. Okay. Oh, I mean, tell me, like, uh, who, tell me, like, tell me who's oh featured God, prominently. <laughs> and they're like, I mean, Genevieve and and Fabia are like in a shadow. Like, that's kind of rude. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're long for the show either. And yeah. look at, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I can't even tell, like, tell who some of these and, teams are. There's yeah. Some and, and look in this who, picture. and look who the kings of the mountain are. That's a good point. Max and Christian. Yeah. Maybe it's just because like Max has like cool yellowish pants on. I guess I feel like probably Brester just, like, is featured prominently. Well, that's what I'm that's what I'm wondering. Like, I don't know. Do you think that this means something? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe so, it was just a color thing based on like the co their coordinated colors, which I don't remember them being color coordinated. Do you think this was just for like the press photos? Press photos, maybe, maybe. and an artist's rendering. I wish that they were color coordinated all the time. That would be so cute. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, maybe two <laughs> amazing race uh, for that. I but do. Anyway. I do like how when they've got the um, when they've got the map, um, like of yes, yes, the and they like have Good the little skills. button of like who is at what point. I, I didn't notice it in the first. Um, I didn't notice it in the first uh, episode, but I did notice it this time. Oh my no! I brought my notes. Your thing up. is still up. Yeah, there. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Nobody, nobody read my notes from uh, <laughs> Race to Survive. Okay. Um. Anyway, so uh, then we got to see some of the other strategy that was going on. Uh, where okay, Bella and Kaysen. I think that they are our uh, team that really is thinking about this the most strategically. Yes. I, I wouldn't Big be surprised to them. find out that uh, they are like fans of uh, these uh, shows that we cover the survivors and probably uh, amazing all... race for sure. Right. Like you would think so. Yeah, yeah. At the very, at the very least they, um, they have to watch something. I don't know. I'm just getting that vibe. Just even like listening to how case and, and Bella like talk about like how they're handling things like it just felt very classic, um, like competition reality show confessional style, um, which I enjoy. And I I was finding myself being like, yes, Bella, like I stand like I relate to yes. you so much, like have them underestimate you, queen. <laughs> I think that they are our biggest hope for uh, creating some drama on this show. Yeah, I hope so, because, um, you know, well. There's always going to be the clashing between the pairs, like individual, mm -hmm. and that will be fun. That's that's fun, but it is still competition, and I want to see the teams clashing with each other. Clash and if they're other, not right. even going to communicate with each other, if Oliver and Wilson are like in a separate beach half the time, um, we're not going to get that. So, yeah. whereas I feel like you know, Kason and Bella are your like you know, social butterflies and yep. they're going to be in the mix at all time talking to people. And I, I like that. That's okay. Good. So they meet up with 
Jeff and Hunter. And Jeff and Hunter, uh, Bell and Case are the brother and sister adventurers. And uh, Hunter and Jeff are the father and son. And yes. Jeff is a, you know, a little bit of an old head in terms of being a, like, longtime adventure racer. Hunter is coming up. He's the new hotness. Uh, <laughs> Jeff is also, like, very shady about Bella and Case in these, like... Oh, yeah. Oh, they 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 have no navigational support. They they must they're, they're from Brooklyn. <laughs> they yeah, which I feel like I don't know. Probably trying to navigate mm -hmm. in a city still takes navigation skills. Like maybe you're not like reading the like the sun and where it's pointed. But like is that why I Biggie had to always ask where Brooklyn at? That he had, <laughs> he bad had poor navigation navigational skills. support. Yes, that's the thing about Brooklyn, I guess. Where just... Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? <laughs> and, and they're like, it's right, it's right here. Or maybe that's why Jeff thinks that people from Brooklyn just don't know how to navigate. Maybe. He learned that from Biggie. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, he's shady, he's shady as hell. He's like, uh, which is great. I love this. Jeff's just being like, Oh, these these idiots from the city, they Jeff loves navigation. This is like he he thinks he's the king of navigation. Like he invented it. I, he like that have. is his thing. He might have invented navigation. <laughs> he hey. might have. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but the whole like narrative of of uh like Jeff and Hunter right now is Jeff thinks Jeff knows best, mm -hmm. and Hunter is constantly being like, My dad is old. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we got so many confessionals in this episode where Hunter is just straight up being like, my dad might die. <laughs> like, it's just like, oh, no, mm -hmm. he's just not. He just doesn't have it like he used to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> dad is like, yeah, he's like, I'm really worried about my dad. I don't know if he's going to make it. Um, yeah, he's gonna but... be the reason we are eliminated from this race because he might yeah. fall down and never get up. Right, uh, and they're really bringing like a uh, big uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade vibes of <laughs> that. I feel like um, that uh, just that um, Jeff is holding back the team. Yes, uh, he he, and he. You could never tell him that. You know what I mean? Like this is Jeff and yeah. Hunter, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and one thing I did notice about uh, this episode. Did you notice Jeff in his sunglasses? No, I did not. He was um, wearing a pair of six shades at one six point. Six shades. That, and it was giving Dale from King oh, of the Hill. Oh, I, I, okay. I, I, we were almost oh, Dale Wentworth I would say, as well. I would say that, I, that he's giving Farm Guy 69. He's giving Dale Wentworth for Okay, me. then maybe that, maybe my brain incepted because I had the same thought. And I was like, I was like, I feel like he looks like Dale from King of the Hill, a cartoon. Yes. But then I was like, but also kind of Dale Wentworth. <laughs> so yeah, he does look like Dale Wentworth. And not so much <laughs> in this picture, but definitely on the show. And maybe, again, another person who is like a reality TV dad who yeah. was like, uh, you know, like with a, was... with a blonde child that is like annoyed with them mm -hmm. half the time. Um, he, He's navigation guy 69, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess so. Um, all right, so navigation guy uh that he they get to this like uh we we are seeing the teams going through the obstacles that we saw the teams complete yeah, which last week at the front of the pack disappointed me because i was yeah. like oh i thought we were done this part but... i think that maybe they thought maybe it was gonna be a two-hour episode to be a two-hour premiere oh uh, maybe maybe i don't know but don't again know. hard to do two-hour premiere when your uh episodes are on at 11 o'clock after okay. raw <laughs> yeah <laughs> so. We'll be yeah, on from yeah. 11 to 1 a.m. I'm uh, not staying way, up that late. <laughs> Sam Moore says you can watch these episodes on usanetwork.com in addition to the Roku channel. Okay. There you go. Thank All you, right. Sam. You need some good navigation support to find yeah, uh, where to he's stream. He's navigation guy. <laughs> Sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um Bella and Kaysen, they get across the line uh easy. very very easy. And you know, they're working with uh Jeff and Christian and Hunter. Christian uh, I'm sorry, uh Jeff sorry. and Hunter. Yeah. Sorry. Um and they uh get across uh very easily. And then so Hunter goes first, and then um we see Jeff, and Jeff is wishing he had more energy. And Jeff is scared. Uh, and then he does ultimately fall off the thing. Yeah. Um, he he's going, he's going across, and you're getting like this mixed with like Hunter um doing confessionals, being like, 
yeah, my dad in his in his older age, I feel like he's developed some fears, which like is kind of relatable though. Like I feel, you know, no, I'm not Jeff's age. Uh, but I feel like even in just like the last 10 years. Yeah, what are you getting um, afraid of that you weren't before? I just am, I I I don't know. I just think in my 20s, I just did not fear things the same way. And I think that like world's scarier. Yeah, the world is scarier. And I just think like, I don't know. I think as you get closer to like mortality, you just like are a little bit more aware of like all the ways that you could die. Um, mm -hmm. I don't you know. You ever like think back like to something like, oh my God, could have could just died that day. I literally was just talking about this the other day. I was like in, in university, I would like walk home from the bar by myself, like all the time mm -hmm. in like, and I would never do that now. Like, it's so scary. Right. Um, like, and how I many people were in the, that car? I'm trying to think like, uh, who was, who was oh, yeah. driving? Like, I've uh... been uh, sitting on, you know, laps of people in the back seat. I've been shoved into the, the trunk of cars. <laughs> uh, like, I've done some I'm like, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Rob. Well, I, I'm not that, doing, I, I'm I not doing any it. of that shit now. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I kind of understand, but like the way that Hunter presents it is like, everything also feels like a shade to like his dad just being old. He's like, now that he's old, he's developed fear. Fear. <laughs> it's like, fear. But I, I think that like, because Jeff is kind of negging Hunter all the time, like, I respect Hunter for giving it back to him. And this mm -hmm. is his way of doing it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So ultimately they get Jeff across. Yeah. Uh, he but Jeff stumbles, but he fine. stumbles, but he gets up, he gets through it. But Jeff is having a lot of issues on the course, Jenny. And mm -hmm. you know, um, that the Bell and Case and they're sticking to them because of Jeff does have good map skills. That He's has not guy deteriorated. 69. Nav guy at 69. Uh, and so um, they are following them along, and uh, unfortunately, for what seems to be the third time, uh, <laughs> Jeff gets trapped in a sinkhole. Yeah, he straight. I did not understand what was happening at first because I thought that he just fell and like hurt his foot, yeah. but it turned out that he was like his leg so completely went inside of the earth, and he could and not he couldn't get, out. get it out. He couldn't get <laughs> he out to be helped. He needed help. Uh, yeah. They finally, they finally did uh, get him out. And he, he explained what what happened to him. That one was the worst because it just sucked me. Yeah. <laughs> just sucked that me. Is, yeah. That's the worst. The that worst. Happened? That was that. That was the worst. <laughs> Sounds like it might have been the best. <laughs> best of the three. He said it happened three times. Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, I guess maybe maybe after it, it happens too many times, it could be some, very sensitive violent suck i don't know yeah. I don't, yeah, i'm not sure sensitive. he didn't he didn't seem happy about it but yeah. um we also saw um a food trade take place yes uh, yes okay teams. was this I a loved, good like, trade was this a good trade oh i thought it was a great trade okay mm -hmm. so we got an update because we talked about this last week we should we should give the update on like what actually happened with Hunter. Hunter says that he threw up for six hours after he ate the clams. He said over 100 times. Do you think that you would count every time you retched as like a single time? Of I don't believe. I don't think you could throw up 100 times. Do you think, yeah, I think he'd that be was dead. hyperbole? I think, I think he would be dead if he like, threw up how, 100 times. Eventually you run out of liquid, right? Like <laughs> how, much, how much water he, were in these clams? He could not continue on with the race. I think he's being, uh, that's a tall tale. Yeah. But like times. maybe I, I think maybe I believe that he was like sick over oh, the I believe course he was of sick six as a dog. hours. Yeah. Yeah. But like for sure. oh he said over 100 times as if like but he didn't say it in a way where it sounded like he was exaggerating. He said it so like matter of factly um mm -hmm. that it made me question like do you truly think that he counted how many times he threw up like each time he went like Bleh? Yeah. Like that's one he's counting every time. Like yeah, maybe it's like count? a dry heave situation where it's like, uh, like every time you go, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, God, again, I don't gross. want to like gross anybody out. All right, but <laughs> okay, so tell me about this trade, okay. Jenny. So Bella and so, Casey, yeah, okay. They, so so Bella and Casey find out that uh, that Jeff and Hunter are vegetarian, and we do get a quote from Bella saying. You're vegetarian? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had I had a similar thought where I was like, 
you did know that you were going to have to live off of the land, right? Like, no, I just think? cut my finger off. <laughs> he, he almost lived up to that this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It was an omen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he Jeff got real hungry. <laughs> he was getting close. Mm -hmm. um, so so they so Kason and Bella now know that uh Jeff and Hunter cannot eat any of the the, the meat related uh rations they've got or they can't go like they're not fishing and and uh yeah. clamming. Uh yeah, Hunter is actually quite ironically named. Yes, exactly. He's a hunter of berries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's really good Berry at hunting hunter. blueberries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, Kason and Bella offer the trade of they. I guess they have the extra bannock, and they're gonna trade the bannock for I think muscle. Have you ever had like, bannock? I have never had it. Um, because I the first opportunity I had to have um bannock, I was already uh, uh... I'm allergic to wheat. Yeah. So I don't have like any flour related um, products because it. Yeah. Bannock bread was made by our ancestors while on the trail. Try throwing in blueberries or raisins for flavor. Yeah. So um, I know like at least in uh, like the area that I live in, like um, like bannock tacos are like a thing. OK. I don't I've never I've never had one again. I, I can't eat them but they, apparently they're delicious so it's like you just mix it with water and it makes like a apparently it's like a super high ca calorie um flatter yeah. bread do you think um, do they have just the flour or do you think they, they have the actual bread i think they just have the flour because i remember them in the first episode they said the word flour as one of the rations Got um it. but it, it's 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 bannock so they yeah. mix it with the water um and then I don't know if they have to heat it or like how mixing it with the water. Did, I don't know. I don't know how we it didn't get turns into from. It. Yeah, we didn't get the lesson, but I am learning things from this. We are learning. Show, I will say that. So they, so Kason and Bella are gonna give up that because they have extra of that, and that's great for um for Hunter and Jeff, and they're getting I think muscles in return. Um, and Bella is like, yeah, we got the upper hand because sure they're getting extra carbs. We're getting extra protein, baby. And I'm like, yes, girl, that is right. Mm -hmm. That is a great trade to me. Yeah. I don't okay. know. I think, I mean, I guess we'll see. I didn't hear of anyone else throwing up, but. <sighs> yeah, I really, if Bella says it's good, then I will take her word for it. I mean, I do think that, in a perfect world, I feel like that you can potentially find other mussels or clams like well, we out in the see. wild yeah. yeah so but i guess like if we if we're yeah, i don't know if you could that... find more carbs yeah probably not um i mean ideally you're getting a little bit of both right like you want to pair the mm -hmm. carb with the protein to get the the maximum energy you need for racing but i think not if you're on keto I guess if not if you're was yeah. anybody on Imagine keto doing in this, this race? Keto. <laughs> no. I, was Brester on eat? keto? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, your ration is a stick of butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can have fish. Um mm -hmm. but so I don't know. I just I I think that they can't they must get rations again for the race part because they can't expect them to stop and go like clamming, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, maybe it is more helpful to have the bannock in that situation. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, but I, I, I'm just like the kind of person where I'm like, give me protein. I would rather, because I think it just, it's going to fuel you more than a carb will. I mm -hmm. listen, I'm not a, I'm not a nutritionist. Yeah. But okay. All right. Yeah. We're not, here, we're not here to, <laughs> yeah, to. <laughs> like macro manage uh this yeah, whole you know show what? Eat however it works for you but for me i can't eat a lot of carbs because of the flour anyway so i'm like in my brain i was like this is a great trade for me i'm getting protein um so but i love that like i like to see the the thing you know the things about the game become like mechanics for strategy where it's like oh okay we're gonna make a trade with these people Sure. All right. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, this is basically, yeah, Banica are the fire tokens of yes. the race to survive, colon, Alaska. <laughs>
Jenny, let's talk about what's going on uh, a little further back at the pack. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, those two teams of Jeff and Hunter and Bella and Kaysen, uh, they are closing in on the survival camp. Uh, but there were three teams that were further back into the pack. Uh, we have the team of, I believe it's Robin and Robin Elizabeth. Robin and Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. Robin and Elizabeth. Uh, they were at the very back of the pack uh, with uh, Genevieve and Fabia. But for some reason, they, they just turned on like the afterburners in this episode and then just started booking it. Yeah, I was really confused about how we ended up where we were with the teams because um yeah in the last episode the the one overnight where they stopped um for the 12 hours it was it was those two lady teams hanging out together and looking at the the penis grub or whatever mm -hmm. um yep. and, totally looks like a penis totally <laughs> and spoiler they they ate it <laughs> they uh, loved, yeah <laughs> but uh yeah no, i kind of miss i think it must have happened last episode and i just didn't notice where uh robin and elizabeth kind of booked it forward yeah. but um so they're like in the middle they're in like their own little spot they're um, in the middle they did not really have a lot of story they, they were just like their, their story yeah. was that they just like <sighs> and they, just, they like <laughs> Is by by Genevieve and Fabia. See you I never. don't even remember them having like a story in this episode, no. really. No. Um, but it does it does seem like uh they they will struggle going forward eventually just based on previews. But yeah. today today they're fine. That was fine. Okay. Uh meanwhile, at the back of the pack, there were two teams uh that were struggling. Uh it was Genevieve and Fabia and Justice and Hakeem. Um, oh where Genevieve and Fabia, you know, they were trying to uh, do their best. Um, they, uh, I don't really know why they were struggling other than uh, they just have struggled the whole way through. We got much more about the team of Justice and Hakeem and some dissension in the ranks as uh, Justice is a little bit like, what's Hakeem's problem? Yeah, we got like the the worst thing where, you know, Justice is essentially saying, I I'm not faster. mad. I'm just disappointed. Like, he's like, I'm just actually like, good at this. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so shady, though, because because <laughs> Justice is like, I thought I was going to be the one slowing us down. Like, this guy was in like special operatives. Like, what is going Fail! on? Yeah. You oh man, don't go so slow. <laughs> don't let Billy see time to this. Pay the man, time to pay the man. Oh man, I don't think he could handle it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Now, now I'm questioning uh, if he could handle uh, the world's toughest test. Because I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Based on the, this performance. Yeah. Probably not. Um, and yeah, he was just like very slow. He's like falling over all the time. Like he's mm -hmm. like. I mean. To be fair, the land does seem very like uh precarious. We did see Jeff get sucked, <laughs> by, the, sucked by the land very hard by the land. That one was the worst because it just sucked me. <laughs> <laughs> the worst, just mm -hmm. the worst. Yeah, um, I, so I think that was happening to Hakeem a little bit at certain points. <laughs> he was like partially being sucked by yeah. the I think by that's the what earth. Uh, this is what Justice said about him, right? That he uh, that he really sucked, yeah. I think yeah. that's exactly what he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just... All right. Well, yeah. the teams, the last two teams are going to be like, like up against the clock uh, in this episode where yeah. it's like, we don't know who's going to come in sixth place. If it's going to be justice and Hakeem or Fabia and Genevieve, I, I, we did spend more time in terms of like backstory with Fabia and Genevieve. Yeah, we got more about Fabia last week um, when we got introduced to their team. And we got a lot more from Genevieve um, this week. And I, I think she's fun. I, I really like her. Um, and so she's, like, talking about how um, she, like, got her, that her parents. Life. Yeah, her parents, like, wanted her to be, like, financially set up. Um, and that was how, like, they saw success. And that just didn't make sense for her. So she's, like, lived in her car for like mm -hmm. the last five years um and so she's basically like it kind of made me sad where she's like if i win this race and win this money my dad will get off my back it's like mm -hmm. oh that 
<laughs> that hurt myself, but also deeply relatable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to win some money so my dad will leave me alone about mm-hmm. my finances. Um, yeah, so, but I thought that she was, I thought that she was really fun. Um, and they were, like, the the main, like, thing was that they were trying to just get ahead of, because mm-hmm. they were in the back. They were they trying to get ahead of. They days behind the picture. team. Oh, well, I know. I- like, there were, like, two separate nights that they went to sleep, I swear, when, like, they were all already at the, um, at, at the least, survival camp. Yeah, at least. Um, I, I don't know, like that my notes start in is it day is it day two? Uh when we see that that's the day that uh Wilson and yes. Oliver get there. Yeah, and they and don't Max get to the Christian. base camp until uh what day day five. Yeah, they I think they do it at the end of day four, yes. and then day five, everybody is there. Um, yes, yeah, that's right. I think they get there late day four. So yeah, mm-hmm. two two whole nights um and i'm pretty sure like because they have the little counter that you can see at certain points um and so hakeem and and justice get to the crate when they're still six or at at sixth place or whatever um and then they show favia and genevieve approaching after because it wasn't clear like how separated they were yeah but like there was like 24 minutes left on the clock they were kind of close yeah yeah like and I don't know what would happen there. Like, do they, they just go? They to just sleep? get eliminated. Or do they get eliminated? I think they get the eliminated. And it's like, oh, we already lost the team. Uh, come on, <laughs> pick up the base. But would they, like, that's what I'm questioning. It's like they already had the spot. So would they have just been like, oh my I God, think I think they, guess they, they had to get 12. there by day four. I think okay. that the race did is it on say a that? schedule. I oh. think it did. Um, because I think everything they, there's six races uh, that they said in the first episode. So yeah, I think that there's um like the races are a certain amount of days, uh, and then with an off day in between. Okay. So I yeah. think that they are on day, a schedule. Yeah. Day five, I guess. Now, was could like the producers be a little bit like uh like were they like an hour behind and they're like, all right, come on, come on, ladies, like TikTok, let's go. Yeah, who's yeah. like checking the like, right like on the production mold gonna... that every everything was came down to like there was two seconds left on the clock on every single right. competition um, exactly but anyway okay so they get there and they get a note and says guess what you didn't get eliminated <laughs> it was so funny like mm-hmm. watching like them read it being like someone was like <laughs> someone was medically evacuated you made it <laughs> yeah like they're excited like very excited that little do they know got- Little do they but, know that Esther was uh, planning out what heaven was going to be like. Uh, she was really? Tears? Uh, yeah. I mean, heaven is the ultimate survival camp. I mean, everybody else is still out there on the course. And then you just like, like, you know, kicking back with your feet up, uh, waiting for everybody else to get there. Right. So is there an advantage to getting to heaven earlier than early? Your um, like I guess whole- you could like pick out like the best spots and it does bring up a good question of is heaven tiered or yeah. is it just like, you question. know, you know, basically like general admission heaven. General, general I called admission. it socialist heaven uh, at the uh, <laughs> on Robin communist Cuban. heaven. <laughs> yeah. Communist heaven on Robin community podcast. But that's a little bit more like uh, that's uh, that's charged <laughs> language. Uh, I'll call it general admission heaven. General admission. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know cuz like I don't there necessarily should be a VIP think you want to get there super early. But yeah, I I guess I could see the VIP area. It, it makes sense. Um mm-hmm. all the blueberries you could ask for. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I I don't I don't know. It was it was really well, funny in heaven, because they don't run out of blueberries, Jenny. That's the, the, yeah, actually the they trees just, keep just them refill out. them. Yeah. yeah. And they're fed to you or something. Um I thought it was funny because like Fabia and Genevieve were the one team that actually, I guess, had passed um, Brett and Esther when Esther was down. So they yeah. actually knew what happened to her. That's how uh, far her. back they were that they actually had to. <laughs> <laughs> that Brester uh, had gone down. They were ahead the of them. team that was yes. that was getting airlifted Medically out evacuated. was beating them. <laughs> yes, for a while mm-hmm. while on the ground unconscious yeah. yeah the show made um, it seem like that they were about to catch um up to justice and to yeah. hakeem but no it, must it never not happened. have been the case yeah justice we're hakeem, and hakeem heard editing. the footsteps and they picked up the pace yeah um and, and i don't know i just thought it was kind of funny because it was like they they had like 
clips last week where they were like, oh my gosh, like someone's getting airlifted. Like people were noticing the helicopter helicopter and stuff. And like, so don't you think that people would have put together that maybe a team got eliminated? Mm. I don't, I don't know. Like, don't you think like, oh, maybe even for the last team, we're not actually eliminated. Yeah, but I don't think you necessarily know. I think you got to- people got told like, okay, whoever comes in last is going to be eliminated. And maybe they were like, not oh, gonna maybe, maybe there's a thing, but maybe they don't show that on the show. Maybe, uh, maybe the producers are like feeding them like, no, no, somebody's getting eliminated. Yeah, Doesn't you better matter. keep going. Doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, you better go. that's fair. You don't want people to just like mail it in on the first leg of the race because no. they found out that someone got medically evacuated. But for us in the know that knew there were seven medallions and seven teams yeah. left, it took away a little bit of the like intrigue for me right. because I didn't care whether Genevieve and Fabia <laughs> got ahead of Hakeem and Justice. It didn't matter to me because I knew they were all going to still make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, well, the show doesn't really give you that information. Uh, you know, they make it seem like uh, there are stakes. Ultimately, everybody I mean, gets to the base camp, to the survival camp. But, like, why would they put seven medallions in the crate? Uh, if like we weren't supposed to know that seven teams were going to make it, it's like, I can count. Well, I think they had to show us the crate, uh, in the beginning. We didn't know that Brester was going to, uh, not make it to the crate. We saw the crate after Brester went out. So I'm just like, that's where I'm kind of like, Mm -hmm. we were supposed to know that that was probably, I don't know. Jenny, you're thinking too much about this. I, this is story of my life. (laughs) I'm just trying to make sense of this, Rob. It's fine. Uh, (laughs) Let's talk about life at the survival camp. Um, Okay, so you mentioned about how Max and Christian had set up, and they set up their uh, cooking station about 200 yards away, and there was some good clamming going on. Yeah. uh, Max was just clamming. He's Mm -hmm. clamming, and he hopes you like clamming, too. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, but he kind of hopes you don't like it too much because don't like it too much. You need to save some clams. He's gonna him. like keep it private. Now we're gonna see later on in the episode where Bella and Kaysen realize, like, look, okay, all right, we've got an alliance with uh, Jeff and Hunter, but these guys don't know how to do anything. Um, they know <laughs> they how can to navigate. Map. We need other friends. We need friends who actually know how to like find food. We yeah. need to go. And uh, like befriend Max and Christian, and they're they're gonna think that we're not threatening. And that that is why they're the best because they know their strengths and their weaknesses, and they also recognize the strengths and weaknesses of the other teams, which is like social strategy, like one on one, knowing how you're going to be perceived by others, and knowing things about others and like what their strengths are and also like reading people's ego and knowing that like oh these people love flexing their like knowledge and like teaching you things because it makes them feel smart and they think of you as like lesser and it's like right why not benefit from that and i absolutely love that like these two recognize that and are actually like playing into it do you think that it was partially like hey if you help feed us, we can also help beat Wilson and Oliver in the next leg of the race. I mean, you know, I'm sure there's conversations like that being like, listen, you know, if these two are, you know, the clear front runners, we need to work together to keep all of us strong so that we can gain on them and, tr- and try and just get them eliminated together. And then because we we got like some confessionals from case in like that, where it was kind of like. I'm going to be making friends. And then we're, you know, in that last leg of the race, it's like every team for themselves. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's literally having conversations with, with the other teams being like, our main objective right now is let's look out for each other. We can't let these guys run away with it. So we have to do what we can to get them to the back of the, the race and get them eliminated somehow. Mm -hmm. And that means we need to work together. That's got to be happening. And I I bet Max and Christian love that. They're like, Mm -hmm. yeah, help. Because yeah. we can beat you because, like, I'm not worried about you. And I bet I know who likes it even more. Uh, Jeff? 
No, the producers oh. of Race oh, to Survive producers. Cullen, Alaska. Yeah, no, they're so thrilled. They're like, okay, good. Thank you. Thank God somebody's playing the game. Yeah, and I like it as well. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm right there with them being yes. like, yes, thank yes. you. Yes, okay. So Jeff um, and Hunter, they need to set up their house. And there's some, we found out that Jeff also is very particular about, he likes a very comfy mattress He's very mm -hmm. particular about how his bed Memory is going foam. to go. Hunter <laughs> yeah. has some thoughts about the, like what they things they should be doing. Jeff is like, no, no, got to work on my bed right now. Yeah. And I think he also wanted um, he was trying to make like a clear exit in their like camp space to go to the bathroom in the yeah. night or something like that. And like. Hunter is like, is that our main objective right now? Is our exit route to the bathroom? Maybe um, Jeff needs to get up multiple times uh, during the night. Okay. Sometimes men of a certain age, <laughs> that's a thing. Yeah. Hunter. Just, uh, <laughs> the, the prostate's different. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Hunter should know about getting up, uh, you know, yeah. multiple times in the night. He threw up over a hundred times last mm -hmm. night, apparently. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, uh, Jeff is working away and then we see, uh, there's an incident, uh, oh where, uh, as, as you pointed out foreshadowed last week, <laughs> I'd rather just cut my finger off. And then, you know, sometimes you, went you for just it. get an idea in your head and, you know, sometimes it manifests <laughs> and he chops his knuckle with an ax or with a hatchet. Yeah. Yeah. This was alarming. Um, and I will say the preview, uh, cause you get the little like snippet before a commercial that, you know, shows you what's coming up. Um, this ended up looking way worse than I think it was because I'm pretty sure we saw a clip of the iodine being poured on it, which was like red, yeah. um, which I thought was, he, I thought he was just bleeding out. I was like, yes. Oh my God, this man did chop his finger off he he's hungry um <laughs> but no it, it sounds like he just kind of nicked his knuckle a little bit mm -hmm. but then you know what Ra, i just realized yeah another foreshadowing in this episode did you notice that when um jeff and hunter got to the survival camp um jeff's greeting to i think max and christian he just went knuckles he oh. said knuckles and he like bumped knuckles with one of the I can't wow. remember which one. And then you couldn't his write knuckles this. almost <laughs> got taken out of the game. Wow. So I don't know. There's like there's some sort of line going on here with like Jeff's hands, his fingers, his knuckles. It's like a thing. He's a yeah. hand guy. <laughs> pff, he mentions <laughs> things and then they happen. It's amazing. Yeah, he's manifesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so meanwhile, um, you know, everybody starts clamming with the exception of uh, Jeff and Hunter. Ironically, like it was good that Robin and Elizabeth were there because they had to administer the medical help uh, yeah. for Jeff. Is there a doctor in the house? Yes. <laughs> yes. Too. Literally. Yeah. Yes. OK. Um, but things are going like so well for Max and Christian. Uh, we see we see them eating. And then uh, things are going so well that by uh, the day that they have to leave, uh, we we hear this. After we get packed up, I got one more piece of business to attend to. You got to drop a deuce? Yeah. yeah and nice. then uh, I'll have a nice light load for the way out of here. <laughs> but still a load? <laughs> It'll just be lighter. <laughs> it doesn't sound like he's going to go to completion then. <laughs> You want to empty the tank, my guy. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, that's a good sign. Like, that means he got enough uh, nutrition. Yes. Yes. So I'm happy for Christian, honestly. <laughs> no, that is a good sign. And yeah. certainly, like, I know some folks uh, in this the Amazon that it was weeks. Uh, there was a woman on Outlast where I don't think she, like, uh, like went number two the entire time that she was there and ultimately 
Uh, she had to be medically evacuated. And so Brutal. that's a that's a good rule of thumb on the you want to evacuate or less you be, be evacuated. evacuated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to be evacuated. And you want so maybe that Jeff had the right idea of having a entrance way to the bathroom because you want to yeah. make sure nothing stands in your way. When and I calls. guess maybe that's a point in the favor of like, don't overdo the protein because you don't want to like Joe Del Campo yourself mm -hmm. out here. Yeah, um, I believe you stay hydrated too. Yes, exactly. Those are good um, So yeah, the hydration and and not, you know, and, and the berries probably help. You want some like actual fiber. Uh, sure. Um, but I feel like just eating clams and like mussels is probably not as hard on the digestive system as like piles of beef <laughs> <laughs> like you're probably like less likely to get it's so uh, tender yeah <laughs> it's, so, it's just so tender <laughs> it's not so tender once it gets into the system <laughs> <laughs> i love yeah. that they showed us that though like that was a charming little moment to me mm -hmm. listen i i i'm here for it yeah but yeah <laughs> a couple other moments of camp life that we got to see um jeff plays the harmonica of course he does mm -hmm. like what a i don't know he's a fun guy he's yeah. he's he's got he's got some quirks uh, yes do you think that Dale Wentworth can play the harmonica? Um, I don't know. Um, hmm. <laughs> um, I would guess not a harmonica not. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not a very like harmonious time on Survivor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if uh, I don't see him as like a, a playing music to to lift your spirits kind of. Mm -hmm. kind of dude <laughs> yeah i don't think so he's like more uh, like get off my lawn <laughs> mm -hmm. get out of my camp <laughs> yeah um okay uh he doesn't strike me as like a john popper um uh played with john rocker john rocker <laughs> <laughs> more of a rocker not popper <laughs> yeah and then uh we also saw where um max also <laughs> uh shaving. Seems, is, is shaving uh he seems to have brought an electric uh razor i guess it's battery operated um yeah. and i gotta ask kiva and chester is that uh the lawnmower 3.0 <laughs> is it multi is it multi-use <laughs> Can you use it in multiple spots? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep it away from Jeff. He's going to take something <laughs> off. <laughs> don't get, don't let him near the blades. Yeah. Be, be very careful out there. It probably looks like a penis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep it away. Even from more him. so with lawnmower 3.0. We did see Fabia doing um, surgery on the penis. On the banana slug. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, I guess like remove the bad stuff from it. Is it like, so. is it like when you have to take the poop out of shrimp? I guess so. <laughs> I think you just don't eat those ones. But if you're out, you're trying to survive, uh, you're racing to survive colon Alaska. You're racing to survive. You might not yeah. have a choice. Yeah. That, that was pretty gross when you had to disavow really the uh, banana slug uh, for sure. And like, but I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't believe that Max had like a beard trimmer out here. No, that was wild. Like of all the thing, of all the priorities out there, like you're sleeping on like yeah. wet moss. Yes. And you're like, Oh, got to trim, got to trim the beard. But I guess like this guy, yeah. he's on TV and this is not well, the first time he's been on TV. And, and honestly, Jenny, like if we really want the answer to, is it a, like a multi-purpose tool uh, that, I mean, the man has spent uh, hundreds of days on uh, naked that's, and afraid over a hundred yeah. days on naked and afraid. That's a good point. But mm -hmm. I also just think that like, you know, I think he's a man of confidence and he's, you know, he's a good looking dude and he's mm -hmm. just trying to maintain his look on television. Doesn't matter that he's, you know, out professional in nature, nature enthusiast. Uh, so he's like, yeah. uh, you know, got to keep, he's got to keep the swag turned on. Yeah. It just doesn't stop. Yeah. So ultimately <laughs> not a ton going on here. I feel like in race to survive colon, uh, Alaska episode two, 
There is yeah. a promise of more, but kind of a slow week, I felt like. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've already complained about it. It, it was hard for me. I, I liked getting to know the teams a little bit more, but I, I felt like there was no, like, excitement of uh i i didn't care what place anyone was in and that part of it was not interesting to me because mm -hmm. i knew that all of them were going to make it through to yeah. the next stage so what did you think about the uh, we got a, quite a few updates on how much weight people had lost yes do you feel like, like that was a lot combined weight i don't know uh i feel like that a lot of it is water weight also mm -hmm. like uh you know i feel like that a better indicator would be if we got like body fat body mass uh right. i i don't I, and again like like we don't need to know that about people but no um, but if you're gonna tell you us know this, i do like... feel like um that you know just because somebody was like 180 pounds when they step on the scale at the starting line you know i guess technically they did lose like seven pounds but like it might have been like you know i'm sure they were probably like, very hydrated going in yeah, and I, I'm sure it's one of those things where it's like you probably lose like the biggest gap in the first couple of days because your body's like adjusting to your like new normal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the case like on Survivor though. Do you feel like do you feel like people because we always get the you know, well, we don't really anymore, but like we used to get the, you know, updated uh like at Ponderosa, like how much people had lost playing yeah. Survivor. It's like because you don't get it throughout the game, do you think that it's possible that the number is quite big in the first couple of days and then you kind of just like maintain and then lose it like gradually th through the rest of the game? Um, I don't know. I think that you do lose a lot of like water weight to start. So I think that that's probably like the biggest drop off. The thing about these people is that they are exerting a ton yeah, of working. calories and so, and they're not really like bringing them in. Mm -hmm. So just really comes down to like how much of a caloric deficit uh each of them are ultimately in yeah i i can't i can't believe that uh this show has uh promoted the clam and berry diet um <laughs> but here i am being like well this is the secret yeah not eating <laughs> enough the, clams and berries yeah. why is anybody getting jungle hot for you um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I have a crush on this show. Okay. Um, but I mean, that's not, not even, um, the forgotten brothers of Wilson I, and Oliver. For me, it's cute, not hot, you know, mm -hmm. I, like, I think they're fun, but I'm not like, I don't know. Okay. I'm not, it's not, it's not like that. Also, it's weird because they're brothers. Like, so do I have to like. Like choose which one. Is there, yeah, is one of them the the uh, uh, cute brother? Hmm. I still can't remember which one is which. Yeah, so. that's fair. And don't look at um, the photos because they don't have. I the think person Oliver's that they named first. Oliver's the one that has like more of the bang. Yeah, you know. Whoa. I think. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that he what they bangs. call it? Yeah. He bangs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy bangs. <laughs> 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 okay all right so that's uh the race to survive colon alaska episode two did have a lot of fun talking about it yeah uh it is decision time and so we have been thinking a little bit about how we want to try to approach this and jenny that uh you know we did get uh, some feedback from the listeners in terms of the audience vote and how we look at that mm -hmm. Well, I I mean, I I think it's important to if we're if we're gonna be like a podcast of the people, like I think it's important to at least pay attention to to that part. Yes. So yeah. So we've been talking, and we got a very nice email at this from Mike Christensen, uh, who helped uh, give us some thoughts up, about Mike. this. Um, but I think that moving forward, that we will use our audience feedback as a compass and not as the ultimate voting metric. And I, don't call this podcast an autocracy. Okay. <laughs> we are using the form. Rob is a website that comes slash hit or quit as uh, a, a, we're not going to drop our compass either. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which way is the true North of that? The listeners want us to go towards the direction of that. This is a hit or towards the direction that we should quit. And honestly, 
I feel like I'm invested with this show more so than the farmers. I mean, there, there is a prize. Um, this is at least a game. Yeah. And I think here's the thing. I, I think that all of these people on this show want to win $500,000. Mm-hmm. I don't know that everyone on Farmer Wants a Wife wanted to marry a farmer. And I don't even know if the half of the farmers even wanted th- these wives. Mm-hmm. So I think that the these players are more invested. Um, and that's that makes for, for yeah. fun. Um, and I I at least have, you know, my my interest has been piqued enough in that we still have not seen a team eliminated through the normal race mm-hmm. function. Yeah. So I and there just, is like, I just want to see that. <laughs> still the promise of some sort of sabotage, rivalry. Um Yeah. I, I will say my notes for the next time. Uh so you get your little like next time or whatever coming up on. Um and all I wrote was next time bickering, puking, and crying. <laughs> the big three. So that's all yeah. I need. <laughs> yeah, BPC. More yeah. puking. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, so Jenny, are you on board, Jenny? <laughs> oh, will boy. you ring the bell? I, I, I don't feel ready. I feel like there's, you know, there's more on this course for me. There are trees with berries left to be harvested. Um, I've only just learned the ins and outs of clamon and yeah. i want to see what other fine delicacies i can dig up through this show <laughs> so i'm at least i'm at least in for now but i will say i'm easily like influenced and i still want to know if people are finding cool stuff that because i'm not Mm -hmm. i'm i don't have my ear to the streets yeah okay i don't know what is on tv half the time uh, of things that are already on television if there's new stuff coming out or if there's things starting up that you know about that you think are like rob and jenny uh classic you know material i would like to know hit or quit thank you please let us know in the form yep all week long Okay, Jenny, ask me. Rob, Rob, it's been a long day. (laughs) It's been a hot, damp day. You've had your fingers in the mud, (laughs) digging up clams. Yeah. And I need, I see the look on your face, but I have to hear it from you, Rob. Are you going to ring the bell tonight? Jenny, you know. I've been out here going through trying to find the USA network.com <laughs> to get to the latest episode of race to survive Colin Alaska. But I've also looked at what else is on TV <laughs> and I just about puked a hundred <laughs> different times. And so I have to say that for these racers through Alaska, they've, they've, They've got me sucked in, okay? That one was the worst because it just sucked me. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm not quitting. All right. <laughs> now, wow. I did ring the bell, but I'm not ringing the bell. Yeah, I'm not ringing the bell. bell. Yeah. It's like an affirmative bell. Affirmative. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's kind of confusing. Where I've been staying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I really feel like, you know, the what else is in the tv land right now and i don't mean like the the channel tv land but uh, <laughs> <That's WF, I laughs> but uh, are like the the trees uh that once had blueberries and they've all been harvested like when when favia and and genevieve and hakeem and justice got to the uh survival camp there and no everything had been foraged and they're just like oh i guess yeah I guess I'll just eat this penis beetle. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say that that's where we're at? <laughs> that one was the worst because it just sucked me. <laughs> okay. It's, it's sucker be sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Look, when you're starving, 
You eat what you find, okay? Yeah. And that sounds like to me race to survive colon <laughs> Alaska episode three. All right, so we'll be yeah. back next week to talk about uh race to survive colon Alaska. Maybe some surprises along the way. We'll see. All right, Jenny, what's Never coming up know. for you? Honestly, I am just uh I'm just hanging out. Uh hockey playoffs are starting, so I'm about to uh be the most stressed person. Uh, because my, my Leafs are about to enter the playoffs again and, uh, it's, it's, it's a stressful time. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not watching a lot of TV, more so a lot of sports right now. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Just, uh, and getting excited for, uh, upcoming Toronto shenanigans. Yep. One month from now, uh, yeah. we'll be taking the show on the road, uh, not to Alaska, but to Canada for, some RJP city. live shows uh, for Survivor and for Big Brother. Uh, ticket information uh, will be announced to all very shortly. Of course, uh, we have everything going on with Survivor uh, over this past week as uh, Survivor reached its merge episode and everything going on with Big Brother Canada as well. All at Rob's website.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you could subscribe to the Hit or Quit podcast feed for all of our coverage of Race to Survive Colon Alaska for as long as we cover it at robiswebsite.com slash hit or quit feed. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care of a good one. Bye.